Restoration. Restoration is brought to you by Hisense. Everyday prices for everyday people. Yes, yeah, extra long sanitary pad for extra comfort. We got gas protection. Nido Fortigo contains essential nutrients to help your child, body and mind ready for school. We are blessed to have another day and this is your amazing time on Restoration with Stacy. And we're brought to you by Kind Ketsi High Sense, Yaz Washing Powder and Yaz Sanitary Pad, Hooch Corn and Choco Flakes, Jim Ray Estates, Adonko Original Hand Sanitizer, GTP and La Palm Royal Beach Hotel. Nido Fortigo contains essential nutrients to help your child, body and mind ready for school. I know he's ready because the love I give him grows with him. This effect has been vetted and approved by the FDA. Ghana for yet dumb was say. Corona ya re buy in. A buy and she shall be brain. And so talk and so for more day. High sense a junior mohunti. Yan ya mana bono. Ya yen she shares no cook wa won't dia mum. Nemo misro. Corona ya re in tea. Yet the bind one she shall be bre gua quem a salmon no me and ye dinti. It is a better idea. What da roma a yen ya with him. Yan costua na yen di a bind one she shall ya. A bind ye gua quem mama yen yin an so. Never buy any now. Madam High Sense in the Winnie Dada say High Sense in the everyday prices for everyday people. Remember the days I just couldn't go to the gym because it was that time of the month. Yas extra long sunny chip took the worry away. Easy. Yes, comfort, I got yes, confidence, I got yes. The new Yaz Extra Long Sanitary Pad is the joy of every woman. It is extra absorbent and fits perfect. But don't allow anything to hold you back when it's that time. Wow. Yes. Yes, yes. Feel confident, stay fresh. Hi, is this supposed to be that time of the month? Yes. Yes, confidence, I got. Yes. We got yes protection. I got. Yes, extra long sanitary pad for extra comfort. We got yes protection. Hello, your friend is Jackie. So we will be our winner on who are the to send me And Pim Pino, you to me five gems if you get a dear you need your Brucia, your fans, any and down for for any of them. so, who bet to me about home by using a don't go hand sanitizer, dip beer, any beer beer. If you say you to me five gems if you need my answer is so. A don't go hand sanitizer, bet to me about home by dip beer, free gems, bacteria, I you need your home. A don't go hand sanitizer, sure or do. Underarms. You don't usually think about them. You protect them from sweat and odor. But that's not enough. What they need is something that takes care of them. So they feel good whatever you put them through. Introducing Dove Antiperspirant. It goes beyond 48-hour protection, giving you long-lasting dryness and soft, smooth underarms. Dove Antiperspirant cares for your underarm skin like never before. Nido Fortigo contains essential nutrients to help your child, body and mind ready for school. I know he's ready because the love I give him grows with him. This effect has been vetted and approved by the FDA. To help fight the spread of germs, Learn Life Boy's hand washing habits. Wash hands with soap or use an alcohol based hand sanitizer. Together, let's help fight the spread of germs in Africa. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the FDA. Nido Fortigo contains essential nutrients to help your child, body, and mind ready for school. I know he's ready because the love I give him grows with him. 
Thank you to my amazing Glam Squad, Ophelia of ABS Collection for my outfit, Divine Cassie for my makeup, GH Beauty Artistry for taking care of my guest, and my hair is by Chocolate Hair and beautifully styled by Style by Yemi. A very big thank you to all of you guys. You rock. It is said that laughter is healing. If laughter is indeed healing, then get ready to be healed this evening because my guest is actually going to crack you up whilst we address some very serious issues of his life. My guest today is DKB. Hello. Hello. <laughs> How you doing? I'm all right. Do you rest? Yes, I do. No, whatever. See, you went too hard. Like, why? <laughs> you almost broke me down a couple of days ago when we were shooting our new show. And then... I get reached out, yo, Saturday, and I don't, I'm like, okay, so who is hosting that one? <laughs> is she the same person where, and then they say, yeah, you're the same person. What do you want? Listen, we can pray to God so that he delivers it to you, so you can relax. <laughs> if you even work harder than an underground rapper, why? <laughs> yo, my oh big my ups, God. listen, big respect to you. You worked so hard, I'm proud. I Show some love, applause for both. Oh, applause, geez. applause. <laughs> Work so hard. You see, this is the time to work because I'm young, I have the energy, so I have to put it all in here. Right. Then around my 50s, I'll just be sitting in my porch and just calling Charlie, what's the bank balance of that account yeah, in Denmark? Yeah. What's the bank balance of that account in London? That's what ah. I want to do. So I'm, I'm working for the future. You see that point? Okay. Then yeah. we'll let God give you men's good company so you can connect across the world. <laughs> No, that's too much for you. Stress, no, 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 no stress, no, 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 no. But how are you doing? I think I'm fine. You think you're fine? Uh, the way the economy is going, the vaccine here and there, you know, the sicknesses, and I'm still okay. I should think I'm fine. God is because, good. Yeah, God, and also God is on my side. These days, you can't be overconfident. You can't be overconfident, say, COVID has strike you. Oh, yeah, I'm fine, yeah, yeah, well, so of course. Uh, me, me, me dad, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> my dad, Jesus, at that moment, to me, she knows my father, and knock you. So it's and out of humility and out of respect for all the pandemic we are going through. I think I'm fine. I think with this, if you four before can even understand, say, I appreciate the fact that they haven't attacked me. So I think I'm fine. And, and when I check the head size, too, it's reducing gradually. We so, thank God. <laughs> So let's get to your life. Yeah. Um, the day I found out you're Derek, um, I, I've been fond of calling you Derek on a personal level. Yes, like you're my girlfriend. I'm like, yo, Ochami Gofi, you know, because Ochami Gofi, he left Ochami, you know, Achami, because of the same thing you called um, Ochami Kwame, darling, and then he got pissed off. Oh, no, no, my hand. Wow. Oh, no, I'm a street guy. It's totally made up. I, this is not true, but I like what I'm saying. You understand? We are just saying we're friends, Kwame, darling. We're friends, yeah. Ch and our hand. You know what I'm saying? Like we're trying to start punk. I said, you bring me out to the head. We're going to be a boy. Yeah, a boy. Yeah, yeah. Hey. <laughs> Group no my jaw. Career no my jaw. I'm going to try video. Hey, my friend, I'm going to So please. I want to safeguard my career. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, so. But it hey, sounds nice. Don't, like don't, your don't, boss. Make, don't make me laugh again. No, I'm not. It's true. No, no, don't make me laugh again. Your, your husband is our Zongo brother. We know him. Group <laughs> my <laughs> guy. It's true. No, please. I don't want too much jealousy in the air. Oh, okay. Before we came on, say, you know, he threatened divorce. Oh, really? Yeah, you, you, where we know here? Ah, uh, for that one. Uh, you said, oh, you're looking beautiful. You're doing too long. I was flexing small. I was trying to pay my mom divorce. I was trying So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Stop, I, I'm, it. I'm, I'm, <laughs> stop it. Get serious. <laughs> okay, so let's get to you. Right. Now is your time in the oven. Mm -hmm. Most Ghanaians and Africans got to know you from Big Brother right. Africa. What pushed you to try out Big Brother Africa? So in 2011, um, I was performing at a Citizen Comedy Show by Citizen Coffee. Shout out to Dr. Amwa. And then um, um, Anita Eisen came there a couple of times. So Mnet were looking for Ghana comedians for um, a comedy show that will showcase 
it's like a, a glossary of all comedians across the African continent. So she has been, you know, frolicking with Eminem for a couple of years. And so she recommended me that this guy is very talented. Put him up. So I was there one time, they called me, it was around November 2011, that, um, hello, is this DKD? I said, yeah, we'd like to put you on Eminem Comedy Club. Uh, do you have passport, everything, travel and documents? I've never been to passport office before, but I said, ah, I mean, my passport has been waiting for them. It's almost expiring. What are they waiting for? They're like, okay, okay, tomorrow morning you hear from us, we send you email and then we start processing. That very moment, speed. Passport office. Yes. And when I got there, thankfully, I, I was on a, another channel. So they sort of knew me from there. And it really helped me. They did express for me. So shout out to passport office. They really made me feel like a celebrity. And uh, 48 hours, I got my passport. Because wow. I told them that this is an opportunity for Life me to present death. Ghana. Yes. And they went all out. So I got my passport and I traveled to um, Uganda, Kampala, transit through Kenya for Mnet Comedy Club. So Mnet knew me as a comedy star from Ghana. So 2012, we were looking for um, celebrity housemates. So I was there and they called me that they would like to audition me for Big Brother. So I didn't go file a form, mm -hmm. put in my name, no, nothing. Because they knew me there. So that's what people never understood. Why DKB had it made it big in Ghana, mm -hmm. but it was in Upville, the VIP house. And at that time, Easy Baby yeah. was in a regular house. Mm -hmm. So it, it brought me some envy and hatred because people felt I had oh, gotten oh, something oh, I didn't deserve. Yeah, well, for him, the, the, the TV, ah, you, know, all, you know, all those kind of things. So that was how come they featured me in the, in the, in the VIP house. So when they called me for the audition, I went to the place. I went to the audition, they liked me, and I got to understand that Big Brother was essentially about your personality, your opinion on things, mm -hmm. and they want somebody who would give content. They want somebody who is a bit controversial, a bit uh, brute, you know, not wanting to impress anyone. Mm -hmm. That was uh, really what they were interested in, and I didn't know I was giving that off. So through that, they qualified me to the next stage, and then we did a final audition in Ghana. I said, okay, whatever, if I qualify, cool. If I don't, fine. And I was, I was buying Jollof. I remember that moment. And then the call came. You were buying Jollof? <laughs> I don't play with Jollof. <laughs> Especially the one beside the gutter. It's so nice. I don't know. Like, Ghana is blessed with delicious gutter vibes. <laughs> Watch it by gutter, Jollof by gutter. You are, and then I was a cocoa by gutter. If you see I was a cocoa in air condition, you were fake, well, like, on your original. I know there was no dinner got an itch. You don't got a free one. You have a vitamin or a comb, correct, correct, or lie. So, and then I called him plus 277. I knew plus 277 was South Africa. So when I picked up, hello, this is DK. Is this DK? I said, yeah. Uh, we want you in South Africa for the final audition. Wow. Went South Africa, final audition. I nailed it. They were happy with me, all of that. We did our um, psychometric tests, et cetera. Came back to Ghana and then the final call was supposed to come. The final call was supposed to come. So I remember, I, I started talking to God, uh, Charlie God, <laughs> but uh, it's a big thing, though. Because uh, an African recognition that takes artists 20 years to achieve, mm -hmm. this thing will give me that recognition in a split second. Yeah. So I really need it. So I don't pray with my fasting and prayers. So I, I went into a three day fasting. And then I remember that day I broke the fast at six o'clock, around six forty-five. Phone ring and I checked plus two seven seven. Tight. And I was nervous because it could be yes or no. Yes or no. And I picked up. Hello, is this DKB? I say like I felt the zone over. The zone with me came out. Adi adi, can you tell? Can you tell? Makuma makuma. And then the first word was congratulations and. Oh, he said, I never heard anything else because I just kept shouting and screaming and jubilating. So you are going to, can you listen to me? I said, talk, talk, my friend, you talk, <laughs> don't talk, talk, talk. Just jubilate. And that was when I realized, like, God really works. God is, is always close to us. He's always listening to us. But when we take him serious, he takes us serious. And when we take him for granted, he will take us for granted. I think God is the first Zungo boy ever because one so seed while who have this issue. That's how it is. So if you're far from him, you are far from your breakthrough. And then I got a chance to feature in Big Brother when I had a correlation. So now I had to pack my stuff, get some costumes. There's this guy, Kwame in Jolu. 
he did a lot of my African print African. t-shirts and all of that, Kwame in uh, that, That's all I remember, Kwame, yeah. He didn't give me money, so if you don't give me money, I don't remember all your name. Yeah, so. <laughs> So, so that's, uh, yeah. uh, how, how was your preparation? Did you tell everybody that? No, you're not supposed to tell anyone. I'm going to Big Brother. Confidentiality. Nobody should know. Now, I was working in one media house. Uh, okay, so this is not, okay, this is not, you are, you are an independent platform, yeah. right? So I was working at Vasa, and Amaki was my boss. So I think they would have needed me for another episode or something like that. So I felt I had to tell her so that she used a platform to, you know, garner some votes for me. Yeah. Plus, the show I was hosting were midway season. So mm -hmm. we had like six, seven episodes to go. So at that time, if I'm in the house, we'll have like four or five more episodes to go. So it, 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 will, it will help me with the votes yeah. and the relevance. So I remember Amake was the only one I told. Amake and then the costumer at Jowlu. And then at that time, my manager. Yes. I didn't even tell my mom. Mm. No, I didn't. No, nah, I didn't. Because African mothers can't keep secrets, especially when it's secrets of success. They can't. Or Beckham will be at. Ah, she just, just she shouldn't hear anything big and then brother it will spark. <laughs> yeah, when she tell her it's in her mind, she won't tell it to. But when she like when she's a place where she has big and brother at the same time, it will spark. Well, I can't be brother for. I can't show any. Come on, just from Bile. Hmm. A representative, Papa Ko. And then well, I get me. <laughs> so I, I think I told my manager to reach out to them when I um, exposed. So they, they call the exposure, it's like the launch. Mm -hmm. So each and every housemate for every country will be exposed. And essentially, the reason why they were doing that is to shock the, the viewers the and the viewers. audience. Because that whole face of people wondering who is representing Ghana alone is an excitement. Suspense enough. The suspense was, so for the VIP, bam, DKB. And people were shocked, and a lot more people were angry. Ah, DKB. Yeah, why? Now if I would be for VIP house at DKB, I don't want the easy action regular house. Ah, what happened? So people thought I was going to pay a bribe. And then the my you that time, I wonder where I could get. <laughs> so... But even with the anger uh, by virtue of people seeing me in the house, alone is also promotion for the show. So I told my mother, yeah, when, I'm, when I'm showcased, then reach out to my mom and go that your son is on Big Brother show, etc. So the preparation... So, got, so for three months, you are not seeing your son? Yes, for three months, 91 days. So the preparation, I got costumes, um, I got variety, and I made sure that, oh, there's this guy who did customized tops for me with my name. Ah, I've forgotten. I've, it's been so long. Even after Big Brother, I wore it for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. So I had the DKB mm -hmm. customized, and, uh, and then uh, Ghana Star. I came up with the name Ghana Star, G H A N S T A R. Mm -hmm. So Ghana Star, Gun Star. Oh. Yeah, it was in front of the t shirts. And the viewers were saying every day, every time I wear that t shirt, they like the gangster vibes I bring, you know. Mm -hmm. So it was. It was um, I, 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 it was like a whole variety of personalities that I, I sent in there. But I, you have to sort your costumes. You have to sort what you wear, your, your sneakers, your footwear. Um, you might have to get one or two sporty stuff because you're doing sporting activities. Yeah. yeah, so you sort out your costume. Big suitcase, like two suitcases. And then you, you go. Food, drink, whatever is sorted by them. So w when it was launched, mm. getting into the house, did you regrets the decision that, hey, I've left my life to be Which life? I'm going to Africa and start, what is life? <laughs> oh, Stacey, you, why haven't you started to stay in your own life? You've moved for me. Mm -hmm. it, this, it, this, it, I, when I entered the house, I'm like, this is it. I am an African star. What do you mean? Come on, man. Ah, Charlie, don't go there. Maybe this. This is me talking to a Kenyan, talking to a Zimbabwean, talking to a Namibian, talking to a South African. I, I'm on the world stage. Hey, man, if I go back to Ghana, I'm like, I'll be the hottest sensation. You know, just like it happened for Confidence, just like it happened for Mimi, like, oh, man, it's my turn. That's and, how you feel. And you, you, feel you actually became a sensation. Right. 
and you actually set a record <laughs> in the house. Yeah. That famous slap, was mm. it really a slap? Yeah, it was, it was, it was a slap. In, in Ghana, we call it Olandele. <laughs> Heavy. Kutuka International. What really happened? So what really happened was that the girl was seducing the guys in the house. We were three guys. And she survived eviction from um, the regular house. It was called Downville. So she was upgraded to Abville because she survived the eviction. So when she came, there were three other girls in the house. Rest in peace, Goldie from Nigeria. So it was me from Ghana, Prezo from Kenya, and Rocky from Zimbabwe. She seduced uh, the Kenyan boy, uh, Prezo. And Prezo had an erection following her everywhere in the house. You know, and I saw this, I'm like, this, this is, I, this is nonsense. I, and then she seduced the Rocky guy from Zimbabwe to be washing her clothes for her. <laughs> you can imagine the Zimbabwe guy washing a woman's clothes in the Zimbabwe accent. <laughs> I'm telling you, you have to wash a woman's clothes to show that you care. <laughs> <laughs> so I decided that she's not going to get me. And she tried so many times, sometimes trying to lie beside me on the bed, trying to, you know, just trying to get me in the mood. And then she, 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 she'll, oh, mood for a ball, uh, you know what I'm saying? So I, I didn't fall for it. So it, it kind of like frustrated her because I saw alpha female vibes in her. And I see myself as an alpha male. So now it's about tactics. I won't allow you to get me, but I will get under your skin. And I think I, it, it, it happened because she was all over the place and I was always getting at her that, hey, the kind of girls would deal with, they got bigger backs, tilapia, macaroni, move that, your macaroni body away, <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's a tactic in the house. You have to, you have to get on people's nerves, uh, but not too much. And then I remember I was in the house, I was very endowed and it used to really pique her interest. So I was bathing, and then she opened the bathroom door to see me naked. Ah. So I sat there from the bathroom. I covered up, and I sat there. So when I closed the door and I was bathing, I was thinking, this is not fair. I can't do it to a woman. Why should a woman be able to do it to me? So if a man does it to a woman and there's invasion of privacy or what not negative words, it should be the same if a woman does that to a man. So when I finished bathing, I went straight to one head. I don't like what she did. And if I'm bathing, don't open the bathroom. I don't, I don't appreciate what you did. So instead of her just throwing an apology, she started raining insults on me. And I mean, I'm used to a woman getting all up in your face and your space and all of that. And I told her, next time, if you do it, I'll slap you. Then she told me I should slap, uh, slap her now. And I said, next time hasn't come. You haven't done it. Well, How will I why slap should you? I slap you? Then she said, then, then I'll slap you. She yeah, said that, she was going to slap you. Yeah, she said that she would slap me. So before I knew, she hit me on this side, on this cheek. She slapped me, pat on this cheek, and then it sparked my reaction. <laughs> yeah. Well, so it was reflex action. It was reflex, but people refused to see the reflex. They removed their reflex and they said it was an action. And unlucky for me, the angle, the camera angle they released to the public didn't favor uh, me because they took the angle this way, and my hand went this way. So the camera view from here, if you are not very attentive, you would think she just threw her hands in the air, or maybe she even touched my shoulder. But she really slapped me on my right cheek. So my action was reflex. One, you watch me naked in the bathroom. I tell her I don't like it. You insult me, you insult my mother. I warn you, you slap me on top. How much can a man take? So when I came back, all those men who were judging me, I'm like, some of you will stab this girl and kill her. Because for the persecution she put me through, all that she did, just, I gave only one slap. I, I've done well, to be honest. Because the people who know me very well told me clearly that they were waiting for the slap two weeks before. <laughs> yes, because that house, it would test your- Patience. Patience, your temperament. I thought I was a no-nonsense person. So I went to the house, I was like, oh, I am very patient, pa. I can't take nonsense. Like, listen, you don't have laptop, you don't have phones, you don't have TV, nothing to distract you. The human being is your laptop, it's your phone, it's your, and you are locked up in a place. How, how many times will you get angry? How many times will you be yelling? You die. So you get to a point, you're like, 
you know what? It's fine. Let me just endure it. Uh huh. So people watching me who knew me from JSS primary school, secondary school, even University of Ghana, were like, "This guy would ah, this you even do quarter, he will react." But they see me taking nonsense, and you know. Um, um, so when I came back to Ghana. We'll it come was, back to when you came back to Ghana. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so um, on that revelation, that, that is DKB side of the story. We'll take a break, and when we come back, we'll find out how he did when he came to Ghana. We'll be right back after the break. Nido Fortigo contains essential nutrients to help your child be body and mind ready for school. I know he's ready because the love I give him grows with him. Ghana for ye damo ase corona yare yi baaye abaya en sheshe e bebre en si oto en so for more day high sense dwene mo honti ye nyema ne bo no ya ye en sheshe su kuku a wa ho dia mam ne mo mesre o corona yare ni nti ye de ban bon sheshe e bebre agu akwam esa me ne o mi ni ye di nti nti se wo beto ade a wa daroma ye nya wutre Yen kwaswa na yen di an ban bon sheshe ya aban di agu akwam ama ye nyina na so na be bua ye nyina madam high sense ni kunim dada say high sense dear everyday prices for everyday people the days I just couldn't go to the gym because it was that time of the month. Yas Extra Long Sunday Trip took the worry away. Easy. The new Yas Extra Long Sanitary Pad is the joy of every woman. It is extra absorbent and fits perfect. We don't allow anything to hold you back when it's that time. Wow. Yes. Yes, yes. Feel confident. Stay fresh. Is this supposed to be that time of the month? Yes. 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 Extra long sanitary pad for extra comfort. We got yes protection. Hello, your friend Jackie. So we will be our new home at the Ajete Semia. In Pimpino, you to me five gems if you get a dear you need your busia, your fans, any and that for for any of Nanso, who put me about home by using a donko hand sanitizer, dip beer, any beer beer. If you say you're to me five gems, if you're near my answer is home. A donko hand sanitizer, but to me about home by dip beer, free gems, bacteria, I you need in home. A donko hand sanitizer, sure or do. Ne bow home by FD, I prefer said Jedi and Crat to him, I to him say a Underarms, you don't usually think about them. You protect them from sweat and odor, but that's not enough. What they need is something that takes care of them, so they feel good whatever you put them through. Introducing Dove Antiperspirant. It goes beyond 48-hour protection, giving you long-lasting dryness and soft, smooth underarms. Dove Antiperspirant cares for your underarm skin like never before. To help fight the spread of germs, learn Life Boy's hand washing habits. Wash hands with soap or use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Together, let's help fight the spread of germs in Africa. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the FDA. Nido Fortigo contains essential nutrients to help your child be body and mind ready for school. I know he's ready because the love I give him grows with him. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the FDA. Nido Fortigo contains essential nutrients to help your child be body and mind ready for school. I know he's ready because the love I give him grows with him. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the FDA. Hi, so it's another week and we're still in Jolu for our high sense super crazy giveaway moment. 
And my next winner is Nicholas. Nicholas, how are you doing? Fine, madam. Wow. So tell me, which episode is your favorite? Kwame um, Uji. Kwame Uji? Yes. Okay, so now Jolu, two for Kwame Uji. Well, so what do you like about the show? Tell us. Everything about it. Oh my God, that's flattery. <laughs> Should I fall down? No, no, Should no. Should my no. head explode? No, 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 no. Not so, at all. So you like everything. Everything. But what does the show teach you? A lot. So we're here today with a present from Hisense for you. Okay. So Prissy. So from Hisense, this is for you. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you too. Thank so you what do you have to tell Hisense? Thank you, Hisense. Um, thank you for the gift. And you are going to keep on watching the show. Uh, we will uh, advertise your products and everything. Thank you. Thank you much. to Nicola. So this is our winner for this week's High Sense for Crazy Giveaway Moment. We still in Jolulu. You never know. Next week, I might be in your house. Nido Fortigrad contains essential nutrients to help your child, body and mind, ready for school. I know he's ready because the love I give him grows with him. This advertisement has been better than approved by the FDA. Restoration. You're welcome back from the break. And this is our winner for this week's High Sense Super Crazy Giveaway Moment. And it is really an interesting narrative from DKB. So after that angle we mm, got, yeah. we all said, I will get an answer. Yes. A woman beat her, beating woman. Yeah, village, but all sort of, all sort of negative derogatory so statements. After the action, yes. Did you feel sorry? For sorry for what? You, you feel sorry. Big Brother House is an intense place. Sorry for what? You feel like you are defending your personal space, or you've defended your personal space. You would never feel. I didn't feel sorry for Jack because I felt everybody saw she violated me, and then she slapped me on top, and I only reacted. Ah, justified. I never feel. I never. I never did. Back to the hotel room, and when you're disqualified, you are sent back to your country under 24 hours. Like that fast. <laughs> I remember when they were driving me to the airport. <laughs> oh, hi, man, hi, man, speed, speed, man. <laughs> like they are throwing you out, out of the country. Yeah, like that fast, you know? So, so what, what was running through your head? At the, at, the, at the hotel, they brought me a psych, and we had a chat. So. She was asking me, oh, she was asking, I'm, at that time, adrenaline was still there. I said, I'm cool. Yeah, I'll slap her. Yeah, because she slapped me. Why? Should a woman have the right to violate a man? No. So, and then we, we spoke a little bit. She said, OK, you just stay calm and all of that. You're going to uh, check out soon and then go back to Ghana. I said, cool, I'm fine. Because so, to me, I felt the whole Ghana saw what she did. And they saw that she slapped me and I retaliated. It's a cool bad game. I, mm -hmm. I didn't go beyond that. Okay, so let me give you a quick flip back. <laughs> In that heat, heat of the moment, she picked boiling water from the stove with the intention of scalding me. Yeah. So I was standing there watching her. So I pretended I was going to the left. And when she threw the water, I moved to the right. Boiling water. None touched me. And then she would, uh, uh, the place scattered a bit, and I was watching her. She didn't know I was watching her. And she picked a mug and threw it aiming at my face. She wanted, yeah, she wanted to break my face, yeah. So when she threw it, I, I swerved. When I ducked, it went straight. You, see, uh, you know the mi microwave mm -hmm. glass, the glass screen you can see into the microwave? It broke it. So you can imagine the speed and the force was coming. It broke it and went into the microwave and crashed inside the microwave. But people refused to see all that. Imagine if it was me that lifted hot water from the stove to scour the woman. Yeah. They would have had a revival for me. But, um, so I felt Ghanaians saw all of that, the extra things she did. I felt they saw all of that. So coming to Ghana, I was confident, only for me to arrive in the country to realize, oh, they didn't see, they don't want to see anything. All the focus was on, I slapped. Did you see her violate my privacy? All of that, she slapped me first. Oh, no, you slap her. You shouldn't have slapped her. When a woman does that, you, you must walk away. Big brother, you can't walk. Where, you are walking to where? You are in the same localized place. Where are you walking to? You walk away. She'll continue with the persecution. So essentially, in the big brother house, 
you must defend your it's, it's a very difficult situation. So when I see people talk plenty, well, I'm going to go to everybody. Eh? Trust me. People you think are tough, they'll go there and they'll be crying. And they'll people, break. Yeah. People have been mad in Big Brother houses on other continents. They, 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 there was a celebrity edition where one housemate was ignored. It, it, it you know, it, it, it caused a mental breakdown. Now she was talking to herself and talking to the walls in the Big Brother house. So they have to withdraw the person. Yes. It's that intense. So it, when I see people, oh, Kwakese should have represented Ghana. Oh, one love would have done amazing. One love. He will go to that, that supporter and wear. He will change to Kaba. Sleep. He will wear full Kaba sleep and be sitting there crying. You have no idea how crazy the house is. See, this is how Big Brother is. The guy you saw behead your mother. You are in the same house with the guy. You have a cutlass. The guy doesn't have a cutlass. But you've been told not to. Yes, don't, to, don't attack him. Okay, fine. So you are holding your cutlass. You, you, have, you have been told not to attack him. So he's there. You are here. Okay. Do you know what he's doing? He's reminding you of okay, how he enjoyed beheading your mother. What will you do? Wow. That's some high level of tolerance. Yeah. So, so when I came to Ghana, I realized, yeah, the whole Ghana didn't see anything the girl did. All they saw was I slapped the girl. And hey. Did it affect you? Your career, your personality? <laughs> So like, I think I need to shorten some of the things. So I came first, second interviews. Ah, nobody was talking about the fact that I was abused. Nothing. Why did you slap her? You shouldn't have slapped her. Why did you slap her? I tuned to radio. They gave me slap. Some uh, unemployed feminist group B wrote a letter to Atamos. Yeah, a friend of mine, he's my, he's my course mate. He's in the NDC, a top NDC member now. So told me that they received a letter from some feminist group saying that Uncle Latash should send me to jail because I've disgraced Ghana and I've slapped a woman and I'm not supposed to slap a woman. And I told him, but do you realize the girl abused me first? He said, yeah, he's in it, but it's nonsense. So he tore the letter into pieces. Feminist groups in Ghana are not doing the jobs they're supposed to do. If you say you're a feminist group, you are for women, you should take the initiative to change the lives of women and not rather wait for a situation where a man falls, they capitalize on it to destroy the man's life. What is the use of feminism if you want to destroy a man's life? Isn't it a man that marries a woman? So if that man, you want, you, you, his life you want to destroy, you don't realize that you are destroying a future family. Oh, I lost a lot of respect for that Ghana feminist. I don't care if any of them are watching. I'm not scared of you people. Because you, you did your damn, bah, nothing you should do. All they care about is a man should fault and then they capitalize on it to Drag, you write a letter to the president to send me to jail because I'm going to a reality show and I slap somebody who slapped me. Are you mad? So which part of the law says that a woman should beat a man by the man should take it all? How? So when I saw that, I, I was really pissed off. And then some of them were on radio insulting me, using, insulting my mother, insulting my family. And from the way he, he behaved and the way he slapped the girl, you can tell it's from an abusive family. I can only imagine how many times his senseless father has been beating the mother. Yes, Ghana feminists were seeing it on radio. Now, I remember every single thing. I remember every single thing that happened to me. Those who made fun of me out of Janine Goodwill, I remember them. And those who tarnished me. Attacked your person. Yes, attacked, really attacked. One was Ari Logan. So last year, last, I think last year, middle of last year, last two years, one day I was there on Twitter and then I saw her post talking about uh, that she will bounce back and all of that. And then the, the floodgates of her being open. I descended on her. I reminded her of what she said to me. She wanted to deny it. I hate her so hard. You don't have to. I have to. So easy, I have to. If I'm down, you push me down for me to drown. If you are down, why should I save you? You need to drown too, so you have a taste of that water. I did. I hit her hard. I told her, I told her that if you are succeeding, you are failing. Meanwhile, you were the winner. If you are a runner up, you are a failure in life. I told her. How do you solve my parents? That, that was too deep. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. It yeah. was very. That, that's who I am. And no, I know, but you Since know, I'm, I'm not on restoration. So, I'm no, here to so, restore myself. Yes. I'm telling and you, that's why I want you. To, uh, to let go yeah. of the past. People, but they should know that, yes. People make mistakes, and I'm sure if Irene gets the chance, she might apologize. Don't forget, for I've introduced her at about three or four shows. Every time I'm, I'm going to introduce her, I look at her face directly. Like, Wouldn't this girl make a move to even 
hit on what she did. Because sometimes you bash people and the way you make them at events. I know that sometimes they, like, you do something and you even forget about it. It's, uh, it's yes, so you must long. be held accountable. You think judgment be every single, every single it, word it, you said. It will be, but yes. that is in the light of God. I, but I think as a human, you can offend me, I can offend you. So I think you should forgive her. Oh, me, when, when I told her those things and she was hurt, I was happy and I forgave her. So you had to hurt her before? Yeah, she must her. feel the pain she caused me. Oh, it, it, it really... You know, like, disrespect me. Don't disrespect my parents and all of that. She called me an animal. An animal. And, and she can only imagine where I'm coming from. You've insulted my whole family. Why? What? Slap the girl. Are you related to her? Who didn't know her? You see, this feminism is getting girls to get out of line. I mean, if you get out of line, I will check you. Because to be, to be honest, I was so scared of the feminists and all of that. I, I survived and I realized... They are of no use until a man makes a mistake. Meanwhile, you are for See, if you say you're a feminist, you should be busy in the northern region, dissolving child marriages. If you say you're a feminist, you should be helping girl child education. And, and do you know that Ghana is actually a feminist country? Girl child education started here, first before male child. Gay is older than infantry. Yeah. I did that research because I, I'm very argumentative. My days in university, I was going to tell you, very argumentative because when we went to Lagos, we were told this is an academic discourse community. You must defend what you believe in. So that argumentative nature made me research. I realized, ah, girl education in Ghana started way ahead before boy education. So Ghana is a feminist country. So what, what do you want being an aggressive feminist and encouraging girls not to marry, encouraging girls to feel like they are better than men. Meanwhile, a woman's bed, a woman's curse is for a man to put a ring on her, for her to be wedded, for her soul to be okay. Have you seen any of them happy before? No, always at a distress because they want to defy the duty God has put on them. It's like a man who doesn't want to give chop money. You will never have peace because that's a man's job. Divinely, you are supposed to take care of the family. That's your responsibility. A woman's responsibility is for her to wait to be honored by a man. So what is this group that are encouraging girls not to pursue their divine, their natural purpose? No. no. See, any woman in a bad marriage will tell you it's still better than not being married. Oh. That is, yes, yes. It's because of the curse. That is why some women see the men they are going to marry. This man is up to no good. But for, for, for the mere fact that I'm a married woman, I can also give somebody direction with my left hand for the person to see my wedding ring, I will do that because it's a curse on them. Now, things went really, really south. I remember I applied, I sent a proposal. So this is where the restoration, the flip over change uh, happened. Do you know who changed, caused my career a changeover? You do not believe it. Bulldog. And this message goes to the young cats out there when the senior guys are giving you advices and you don't take action, you rubbish it. I was a bulldog call me. He wants to have a little tete-a-tete -tete with me. Bulldog, artist manager. Okay. So I went to his place. I said, Bubu I think so. I sit down. He's like, okay. Right now, when you're seeing somebody who slaps women, it's you, whether I like it or not. I said, yeah, Bulldog, it'll be true. I said, yeah, so now you'll be the brand ambassador for slapping women. <laughs> So I said, I'm first. It's okay. So what's your title? Make up, be proud. Say, no, 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 I'm driving at something. So as you accept them, you take them on yourself. You need to let Ghana know that you have changed a new leaf. I said, how do I do that? He said, okay. People saw you on the show and they felt you had anger problems. So you need to go for anger management class. You need to subscribe to a, a psychiatric session and all of that, so that the general public will know that you are going through a reformation, you are going through a restoration. It's okay, so I'll go to the anger management class and all of that. I'll learn a lot of things, how to manage my anger, okay? And he said, after going to the anger management class and all the psychology class and all of that, after that, you need to do an outreach. Go out there and speak against abusing women. Speak against hitting a woman, speak against, I said, this is beautiful. So if I go for the anger management class, all of that, they will know mentally I'm reformed. 
And then now, whatever I'll say will be believed. And the fact that I am speaking against what I did carries a lot of weight. Wow, Bulldog, thank you so much. So I started from my secondary school where I attended St. John's Grammar. And to me, it's the best school in Ghana. I don't, I don't, I don't like when people make faces when I say these things. I've not made it. It gets face. me very intimidated because I just smiled. Yeah. It's so nice when people are proud of their alma mater. I, I am. But sometimes our history is not. <laughs> <laughs> but right now, oh, seniors, we beat Bishop Emma. Oh, right now, they for me, right if I go to the voter, I don't fear anybody. Um <laughs> so needless, I know, right? So um I called her assistant mistress at that time. She, what? I'm wide open to welcome me. So I did it in the dining hall. And one teacher in, in our school at the time when I was there, always looking for opportunity to commercialize things. Always. Mm-hmm. The least opportunity. Everybody is paying one one city, please. Oh. Everybody, two, two city, we are supporting the school. So I was going to do the thing out of charity. Mm-hmm. Before I knew, every student that entered the dining hall has some white shit. White people. Ah. So I asked my one day, oh. What would I call when the student asked him? Yeah, it's our ticket. It's two CD per person to support their school. I said, ah, is it your slap? <laughs> I'm slap. <laughs> I'm slap. So after the program, I went to him. Say, you are still doing those sort things? Of no, we are raising funds to support the school. He got, uh, I, I, I sat almost 600 students, so times two. Uh, that's a oh, yes, decent yeah. amount, yeah. So he, he gave it to the school and then they used it for stuff. I think they um, cleaning detergents and you know, those minor, minor stuff. So I reached out to St. John Gamma. I went to Laboni Secondary School. Uh, I went to like four or five schools. I, I forgot, I remember the Laboni one. And then I did a bit of a cracker. Yeah, so I reached out. No knowing, all I was doing, people were monitoring. And now people got to love accept him. that, okay, the guy has changed. But I, it wasn't just the acceptance. I had to really pay for it. For a whole year, I was gigless. Not even party, birthday party, not funeral, nothing. Not adoring, not, not gigless, hundred, zero. I survived on one CD a day. Yes, one CD. So I buy um, egg. It was around 40 pesos back then. 40 pesos. Gary, 30 pesos, making 70 pesos. Then the 30 pesos, I begged the woman to manage and give me one tomatoes, one onion, some small peppers so that when I go back home, I boil hot, hot water, put the gary in it, I make the eba. Mm-hmm. I fry one egg, then I grind pepper so it's eba. Uh, pepper okay, and, and fried eggs. One fried egg. And when I eat that thing, the rest of the day is just dilution. I just be diluting. Yeah, just in my pocket. Yeah, my stomach. <laughs> so the next day, another one CD. And this was the guy who was everywhere, DKB, DK superstar. I was surviving on one CD in 2013. So do you accept you had issues then? Okay, issues with what? Anger no. issues. I'm telling you, when I got to the show, I realized I didn't have anger issues. I was just maybe explosive among friends just for vibe. Mm-hmm. I realized I was extremely patient because me reacting to some, uh, somebody slapping me after abusing me, everybody has reflexes. It, it, it will happen because each and every one, no matter how angelic you look, you have your breaking point. Yeah. Yes, so people be, when, you know, all the time when I hear people say all of those things, I, all I say to myself is just, just, just go to the river house, just 12 hours. Because every year before they roll out the season, do you know that they house journalists in the, in the river house for a few days? Oh. Yes, to see how the new house, uh, coping the new house would be like. Because every year they build a new set. Some, some Ghanaian journalists have been in there every year. Anytime you hear Big Brother, journalists go in, the media men go in there to stay for like a couple of days, something like a week or four or five days. Then they come back to their country. Then they use that to just it's analyze an everything. Yes, assess the set before they bring their um, housemate. Some of the Ghana media men understood what I went through. Some of them under 24 hours. They were melting down. They didn't want to see anyone. They didn't want to talk to anybody because your true character 
would show. Some didn't want to talk to anyone. Some were just worn out. They had burnt out. Some, some get, wanted get to fight. Get me out of here. Yeah, just give me. What is this? My phone. I can't get my phone. You're, not, you're going to be without your phone for three months. And they were without your phone for just a day. And they were burning out. My lapi. My, my lapi no demand. But my phone no demand. Then you they piss me off. You they talk plenty. Say, keep quiet. You don't want to keep quiet. Keep. There have been so many times where they go in there to break fights. Wow. And this is less than two days. And I was in there for 31 days. And the only time I met my breaking point was when somebody abused me. Hey, it's, it's normal. Because even our media men who criticize us the most, who didn't stand there for two days. That house, is, see, don't, don't talk plenty. <laughs> hey, some of us felt we were going to. I think we'll just leave it there. Yes, how, yes. how intense you are about it. Because it says, okay, let me show you the big brother house. This is how it is. They are putting together somebody who sleeps very shallow. The slightest noise disturbs the person to wake up. And somebody who doesn't care about the noise they are making, regardless of the time of the day, they put you together to live in the same place. That's like kerosene and yeah, fire. and fire. Somebody who doesn't like too much talk. Talk a little, fine, just mind my business, be a little pensive, think about things. And the other one who Chatter is like, ta -ta, ta -ta, ta -ta, ta -ta, together, the same place. I can only imagine. Uh -huh. Well, yeah, so, so it's time for you to pick an envelope. What is that? Yeah, you're picking an envelope. Okay. One of the cards, yeah. Okay. Hmm. It's okay. Let me help you. Hey, hmm. what, what's in it? Okay. Thank you for coming. You take home high sense rice cooker. Hey, hey, mama. Hey, hey, hey mama. Hey, mama. Hey. So. For sharing into detail for the first time, what really happened? Thank you. Thank you. Hey, say what? Your say. Who? Thank you very much, High says. Thank you. You always surprise me. Oh, do I? You always. Do I? I, I feel like a part of me feels like we should have been married. <laughs> so, from Frame Masters, we have something for you as ah. well. Just by showing up. Yes, just by showing up. Hey, wow. Hey, I thought that's why you're a fine boy, Bissau. Oh, yeah, me a fine boy. Hey, I'm a friend working. Are you know him? I think so. He's very handsome. Yes. And he looks like a young Jerry. Look at his face. Oh, one of one of Jerry's children, but he didn't show up at the funeral. I think he looks like a Okay, I think I have a couple of enemies here. Yeah. Hey, fresh. And what's that name? Frame what? Free masters. Oh la la, Charlie, Charlie, So Charlie, this Charlie. is also yours. Thank you so much. Please Thank you so much. hang it at home. I will hang it uh, in front of the the door before you enter. So they know it's yeah, your you house. You must kiss it first. <laughs> yeah, I've made it in life. Oh Jesus! You must humble yourself to me. <laughs> This is so beautiful. I leave you here. Wow. Well, this has been an interesting addition with DKB. And for all those who don't know, he actually has a new name. What's the new name? Don't do this. Don't do this. Please. Don't do this. DBK. <laughs> <laughs> My can't get see. Pata Pata <laughs> Pata Pizzi has remixed his name. To DBK. So he's and DBK. And then when he said why, he said, ah, it's the same alphabet. DBK. <laughs> no, no, no. We're, we're, we're switching it we're up. We're switching it up. So thank you very much for watching. And know that we are always here for you to give you stories that will push you to move on in life and know that there is always light at the end of the tunnel. And always do remember... You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. We'll see you next week. Welcome to the end of the tunnel. I see a bright light shining through. And it's just for you. There is hope for the tired and weary. Open your eyes and you will see. Friend